Episode 3 of Season 3 of The Mandalorian, titled The Convert, sees Bo-Katan and Din Djarin continuing to work together on their adventures. But most of the episode was devoted to a familiar planet and old villains. But Shirley also threw some really exciting easter eggs into the music this week that I'm curious to see if you caught. This is Star Wars Music Analysis. The episode begins in silence as Bo-Katan reflects on everything that happened at the end of chapter 18. After a short chord progression as Din becomes conscious, the silence returns to leave room for the conversation between Bo-Katan and Din as we see her unready to tell Din about the Mythosar. As the TIE Interceptors attack, the music finally picks up. Din's guitar cue comes in once he fires the turret and again as he jumps from the ship. Then an ostinato begins in the trumpet as his short motifs of his theme ride underneath in the low brass. An ostinato is a short rhythmic idea that's repeated over and over again, just like the trumpets do in this part. The guitar cue cuts through again right as Din hits the accelerator. Short pieces of the theme and augmentations of his theme continue. Made it to the N1. Heading to you. As the fight continues with Bo-Katan, orchestrated variations of her theme turn into the ostinato playing now in the strings. As Bo-Katan accelerates her ship, her heroic theme comes through as well. It comes in much more clearly then as she goes after the TIE Bombers that just destroyed her home. But it gets shut up pretty quickly as the entire fleet of interceptors approach. As they flee, Micro Polyphony plays faintly in the background with the strings and trumpets. Hard to even hear, but creating a lot of tension as they just barely outrun their pursuers. In the next scene, we jump to our beloved Coruscant. I have to be honest that I was a bit disappointed in the theme for Coruscant at first, but we also have to remember that this is a very different planet now than one we saw in The Phantom Menace. It's no longer the beacon of a peaceful era, too naive to see its own corruption. It's a planet trying to live in a renewed peace as part of the New Republic. The theme takes up some of the same familiar and cliche rhythmic patterns as the Mandalorian's theme with the fanfaric long and two shorts profile. The bass then echoes this as well. The theme does create some uncertainty though by moving to borrowed and mixture chords and with a closer look, there are even some clear similarities to the Imperial March. Both bass lines begin with a descending major third, going to the chromatic median. And then, as I wrote this out, I couldn't help but hear the end of Vader's theme as well with this chromatic median and the outlining of a major triad by traveling from the root to the fifth and then to the third. If Shirley did all of this intentionally, then he's given us an incredible piece of music that shows what something can be in a brighter future and after the Empire. This is essentially a theme being built out of the remnants of the Imperial March and the Empire and being rebuilt in a completely different feeling. I'd love to hear what you all think as well about this little detail. As Dr. Pershing gives his TED talk, peaceful music plays as we feel compassion for his story. And while it's beautiful music, we should also be aware that it moves almost entirely in half-step motion, possibly hinting through its chromaticism at his true intentions still hidden underneath. It was then that I vowed to make it my life's work 
to help others avoid. The Coruscant theme returns as Hershey leaves his TED talk and has a conversation with the taxi droid. Most of what takes place after this as we follow Dr. Pershing around is with a lack of music which reflects the dry mundaneness of the New Republic. But that ends when Dr. Pershing goes to the fair. More cheesy fanfare music plays with an even cheesier xylophone line so playing people. as well. It's all a bit overwhelming. This reflects how childlike and friendly the fair is supposed to be. It's full of innocence, unlike the Empire before it. And it's actually a variation on the Coruscant theme we heard earlier. And honestly, this sounds like one of the pieces that I would have played so in middle people. school. Full of syncopations, but entirely stepwise motion, making it sound dreadfully lame. But after this, Shirley throws an incredible musical Easter egg at us. As they continue to discuss the ethics of cloning, the fair music actually turns to the March of the Resistance by John Williams. You want to touch it? Are we allowed to? This was one of those moments that as I listened, it had me do a musical double take. And I wonder if this had any foreshadowing effect. But I'm also curious if any of you caught this little reference and what your reaction was to it. This is really to cool to hear, but I do wonder if it's appropriate given that it's for the resistance and not the New Republic. Another Coruscant theme variation plays us into the next scene, and again as underlying music as Elia Kane and Pershing speak. But we also begin hearing the low vocal throat singing that's synonymous with Palpatine enter, displaying his plans being further weaved into everything unfolding. Tomorrow night? And this theme enters during these chants that I couldn't quite put my finger on. Perhaps it's a new theme for Pershing, but I was hoping you could all help me with this one. I thought it was Gideon's theme at first, but it's actually quite different. And let me know in the comments if you're familiar with this theme already, because it sounds familiar to me, but I just can't figure it out. The Coruscant theme returns as Dr. Pershing and Elia Kane take the A-Train to the Imperial Disposal Yards. It's interesting how much Shirley is utilizing this theme and I'm curious to see if he's setting this up for anything later by making sure we really know this theme for now. Eerie high drones enter as they enter the Imperial Star Destroyer later, giving us a sense of fear and unease. The chromatic motions add to this as well. As they continue, that theme that's mysterious to me enters a little again. And please, tell me if you know what this theme is in the comments. As Din and Bo-Katan approach the Mandalorian hideout, his theme is emulated in war drums. As they're inside the cavern with the armorer as well, Bo-Katan's heroic theme comes through once more at the end of this episode. But I would love to know what you all think as well. What do you think the eventual fate of Dr. Pershing will be? And are you excited to see what unfolds as Bo-Katan is integrated into the Mandalorian sect? How is this all going to end for these characters, the armorer, Bo-Katan, and Din Djarin? Tell me in the comments below what you think, and consider checking out my Patreon page using the link in the description where you can help support this channel for as little as $1 a month or download PDFs and MP3s of projects as I complete them, along with other perks at higher tiers. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to learn more about the music of a galaxy far, far away, and as always, may the... be with you.